Skip, was Durant vindicated last night? <sighs> to me, vindication is in the eye of the beholder. So if you thought that Kevin Durant was weak and cowardly for leaving Russell Westbrook after they had Golden State down three games to one last year in the playoffs and joining this juggernaut, then I'm sure you're just going to roll your eyes at Kevin Durant winning MVP of the finals. I thought he was vindicated and validated. I found myself rooting for Kevin Durant because he wasn't led to a ring. He led them to a ring. Absolutely. He, he became the takeover guy. Steph Curry, I, I must admit, I can't sort of get past this. You know how big a fan I've been of Steph's going back before his draft. But, but he did welcome in the second best player in the world mm -hmm. and say, I need this help. And Steph had a huge finals. Look, look at these numbers for Steph Curry. He averaged 27, eight rebounds, and nine assists. So he came pretty close to a triple-double, right? Did he have the quietest 34 points you ever yeah. seen last night, Skip? Awesome. No, you're right. <laughs> you're right. And guess what? He took a back seat. Who knew? So, again, I have to go back three years, and I'm going to reiterate this one last time. Mm -hmm. I did not blame or condemn Kevin for leaving Russell Westbrook. I had... Inside sources who were telling me Kevin was just sick and tired of, of playing co-star with Russ, mm -hmm. playing the 1A to Russ's 1. And the management in Oklahoma City, from ownership through the GM down to the coach, they treated Russ like the face of the franchise. They coddled him. They spoiled him, if you want to go that far. And they made it clear to Kevin that the man in Oklahoma City is Russ. We want the ball in Russ's hands mm. in all the key situations. That's why vindication and validation last night for me ran so high because, man, on the biggest stage in the sport, Kevin just took it over. Was he not the all-time momentum-killing assassin? To, you, you made the point already. Every time Cleveland would do something, Kevin would say, no, no, not in my house, especially last night. He would just say, no, I got this. You remember game three, Skip? He did. What, what did he do? He they were the, that? The, the shot of the, that was probably the shot of the whole Playoffs, right? But, but right that, LeBron's face. But remember, he got the pick. He got LeBron got they got picked, and he yeah. got one on one with Tristan. Seven. And, and he just nailed it. And it's a hard shot. That's yeah. a harder shot than that three he yes. jogged into. Right. To me. Okay. Yeah. So let, let me just. Okay. Okay. Great. So 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 he said finally after he's going into his tenth year, he said, "I, I want to go where I can be happy." And he loves the Golden State culture because I saw a great quote from Steve Kerr on ESPN.com where, again, I had an issue with, will Kevin be able to blend into this with Steph being a two-time MVP, one-time right. unanimous MVP first ever? And Kerr said, this was not getting an isolation guy who needs the ball in his hands. And, and Kevin said, right. he loves moving without the ball. He loves passing. He loves running the floor. He fit in our system perfectly. Well, he did. Right. Because several people have made the point, um, this isn't original with me, like, if you took LeBron and put him on Golden State, they'd have a harder time because LeBron has the ball in his hands right. a lot more, right? right? Kevin can just run around without right. the ball and kind of play the Steph role right. except at almost seven feet tall, right. right? Correct. So, in the end, I loved what both guys did because it was a win-win for Russell and Kevin. And this is like an only in Hollywood script. Think about what just happened. Russell said, okay, heck with you. Basically said, screw you. Right. Watch what I do with what's left over here in Oklahoma City. I'm going to average a triple-double for the first time since Oscar. What was it, 63? Six, yeah, 62, six, 62, 63. Okay. And I'm going to lead a bad team to the sixth seed and into the playoffs. I think Russ is completely content with that, just yeah. the way LeBron was content with his triple-double in the finals. Russ, completely content. So what did Kevin do? Watch me top you. And he goes and becomes the MVP of the finals. So one guy's MVP of the regular season – and the guy who left him is the MVP of the finals. That's only in Hollywood, right? Yep. It's an amazing story. And I congratulate Kevin because he, he went where he found peace. And, and all he talks about is how happy he is with Steph and Clay and Draymond. They all just embraced him. And, and Steph Curry said, I'll take a back seat. That's incredible. And by the way, Steph has a ring to show for it this morning. Another ring to yeah, show for yeah. it. Uh, Skip, this is, why I this is why I disagree with you. This was not validation, his uh, vindication. His vindication was his happiness because him going and being happy, yeah. he's not having to compete with his teammate no. for shots, for points, and attention. Yeah. He can go somewhere and we win, we all get credit. 
It's not about averaging a triple-double. It's not about having 50 points and everybody saying who's the most athletic. Yep. Kevin Durant's vindication was his happiness. And to watch the way his all-around game flourished and blossomed in Golden State. Beautiful thing. The way we never saw that it is correct. in all the years Ever. in OKC. So, we didn't see the rebounding. We didn't see the shot blocking. We didn't see the defending. I saw it all on display on the biggest stage in the sport. He's so much happier. And it's easier to play the game when you're happier. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, now, I, now look, they did a great job of drafting. Because think about this, Skip. You got the MVP of the finals. You're probably going to have the MVP of the regular season. And the guy that was also on that team once upon a time, James Harden, is going to be the runner-up. You had those guys in their – you had the Golden State Warriors before the Golden State Warriors had it. You and did. you let it go. I still don't get it. <laughs> Skip. It's because of luxury tax. That's what they said. Skip, you got to – it takes money to make yep. money. Golden State says, I don't care. If you're going to bring us some championships – We'll pay $30, $40 million over. That's what Golden State said. Dan Gilbert is over every year. He's playing $20, $25, $30 million every year. But that's, that's the price of winning, I mean, Skip. Shannon, I, I guess you could argue that the egos were all so big that they would start to collide as they all got – they started to grow up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, James wants the ball more. Russell's got the ball more. And Kevin's saying, I'm over here. I'm open. Right. And somebody lobbed me the ball. Well, you're right, Skip, because if you, when you look at it, you got uh, all alpha dog personalities. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Golden State, Clay is like, Clay is, Clay is perfectly content. Because think about it. Dude is like the fourth. Clay Thompson could be, at worst case scenario, two on any other team. He could. But a handful. I agree. He could be one on a lot of teams. He could. He's the third or fourth best player. He's like, I'm okay. And he seems just fine with it. He just, and, and he poured his guts out just trying to chase Kyrie all over yes. the floor. And for Steph Curry, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a more selfish MVP in any sport than what this young man. Skip, he's unanimous. He can say, I got, some, I got an MVP. Now, we are, there are a lot of people that got MVP trophies, but none of you can say you got all the first, first place votes. I can say that. And he wel welcomes a guy that can do everything that he can do, do it a little bit better, at seven inches taller. Mm -hmm. He can post up. He can mid-range. He can shoot the three. He can block shots. He can, he can do everything Steph can do and better, yep. except handle the ball. He ain't got handles like Steph. Nope. But that's okay. And Steph's like, hey, I'm good. I'm good. You Steph, come in here? Steph averaged eight rebounds in five games. That's 40 rebounds. How did he do that? Yeah. I don't know. Every time I looked up, there'd be a loose ball, offensive rebound. He'd come away with it. I'd say, where'd he come from? You know the difference between this year and last year, Skip? Hungry. They're hungry.